All right, what's up everybody? I wanted to go through a very quick example about a new feature in WebC that I really think unlocked some very powerful mechanisms to really uh, change how we build and bundle assets for websites. Now, folks that are familiar with WebC may know that WebC has a sort of bundling feature built in. So if you go to the WebC documentation, you have an asset bundling section. So if you put script, if you put CSS style, if you put a style sheet linked inside of a component, we'll bundle all of those assets for you and output them um, to really allow you to very easily make um, critical bundles that only apply to content in use on your page. So if you don't use a component on a page, those assets will not be bundled to the page. Um, so it really allows you to build things in a very streamlined way. Now, that's not the feature that I'm kind of going through today. Um, so when you do asset bundling, there's a, an extended 11D feature called asset bucketing. So inside of your component definition, you can declare a bucket that you want those resources to bundle to. Now, historically, I've really used this to separate out um, critical versus non-critical CSS in a, even a single component. So inside of a component definition, you could have some styles that you want to bundle with the initial page load and some styles that you want to load later asynchronously. And you can do that with the WebC asset bucketing feature. So that's great. But the, the new feature that I'm demoing today is a cascading asset bucketing feature. Um, now I know that is, as a term probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it, it really allows you to set a WebC bucket on a container and that bucket will cascade to all of the child content inside of that uh, node inside of a WebC document. So I think this is really powerful and I'm really gonna try to drive it home with a, an example, a live example. Um, on the 11D homepage. So what I've been doing is I've been rewriting the 11D homepage specifically in WebC. Uh, now 11D really allows this migration to happen incrementally, um, not just in a project where I can convert a single template over to use WebC and keep the rest of my project in Nunjux or whatever you'd like to, whatever your previous template syntax was. Um, but 11D really unlocks with WebC, uh, a migration in subsections of a, a single page. So some of you might have seen this post um, on the 11D Mastodon where we sort of go through a couple of steps to start the migration process. We renamed the file from Markdown to WebC. Uh, we wrapped the page content in this template element, which told WebC to use 11D to render that content using Nunjux and Markdown, which was the previous um, template syntax for that page. And that's kind of it. It rendered um, as is using those steps. So there wasn't really too much more to do uh, to get that migration process started. And just for clarity, this is the page that I'm talking about, the page that you go to, the page that you see when you bring up the 11D documentation. Um, so yeah, that's that's great, and that can help you really get started um, using a WebC uh, template on an existing project. But you don't get the full feature uh, set of WebC um, when everything is still rendering in Nunjux. So what I did is that I went back and con started converting um, individual sections of the content to use WebC. Um, and you can kind of see that at play here. We have this callout component. Um, let me just bring up the page to show how it works. Um, and some of this content is controlled by the by the 11D layout. So I won't really go through that as much because it's that's not WebC yet. Um, but you can kind of see that this callout content, the callout component here, uh, co coincides with the uh, 11D blog highlighted posts here. Um, and we can start to see how those components are generated when we sort of scroll down further. Um, so we have a build comparison component, so that kind of controls this 
this bar chart that uh, shows uh, different build times here on the site. Um, we have a quick start web C component, which is this section of the site. Uh, we have our logo cloud here, just another web C component. We have our giant docs button, which is its own separate web C component, sponsors, um, supporters, sites list. So these little screenshots that show here. Um, and then the giant face pile that we have for all of the 11D authors. And it shows on the homepage. And then we have a testimonial section there at the end. So we have components. We have each individual section of the page uh, written as a WebC component. We have um, WebC asset bundling. We have the asset bucketing feature. Um, isn't really at play in this page yet um, because all of the assets get rolled into that default bucket. Um, and we can kind of see that at play in our layout as well, because this is where the bundles get output. Now these are actually commented out. I'm going to show uh, those later. Um, but this is kind of what we're looking at right now. This get bundle, which outputs as an implied version uh, value of default for the second argument here. Um, that's the bucket that we're trying to output here. So all of the default styles in the default bucket uh, for CSS get output into this element in our layout file. Um, and we have the same thing for our JavaScript as well. It's a little bit different with the JavaScript file because we're actually creating an external file bundle. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see how it works in the same way. Um, all of the JavaScript in, inside of components on our home page specifically get bundled into that default bucket on the JavaScript bundle. So that's all well and good. It's working great. Um, we have our components. We have our streamlined bundles here. But I think we can actually make this a little bit faster. So these are uncompressed file sizes that show up in the dev tools here. So this initial document is about 153 kilobyte. Um, that includes all of the CSS for the critical CSS bundle. And I think it's like 40 kilobyte if you go to the home page right now. Um, yeah, 38 kilobyte. So uncompressed, um, it's 153. Um, and compressed, it's about 38. So I want to showcase how to sort of divide this up into critical CSS and non-critical CSS, critical JavaScript and non-critical JavaScript um, using WebC Bucket. So really, the only thing we need to do is uh, uncomment these files that reference the async bucket. So we those, those bundles will actually be referenced on our layout. Um, and when we do that, we'll, if we reload the page here, we'll kind of see that this file is empty. So this new um, async bucket that we've generated is just an empty file. And this is the default um, JavaScript bundle. So down here, we can see the async JavaScript bundle, which is, again, also empty. So we're declaring those bundles on our page. Those are in use. How do we declare what content goes into those bundles on our page? So really, the only thing you need to do is um, create a new element or a new tag on the page that declares this WebC bucket. We'll feed it the async. Uh, name since we've used that previously. Scroll down all the way to the bottom so we can add our um, our closing tag for that and save it. The page gets regenerated and you can see we now have our um, all of the components inside of this WebC bucket that's using this async uh, declaration here. All of the content inside of here goes now into our async bucket. So what was previously empty now has uh, about 19.4 kilobyte uncompressed uh, of CSS in it. And that CSS is comprised of components inside, nested inside of this element. Um, so I can move this around however I want um, to sort of control what goes into the default bucket versus what goes into the async bucket. And let's look at our, um, our primary JavaScript bundle. 
has nothing in it now because there were there was no JavaScript going into the default bundle. Um, so we can actually delete that from our layout altogether since it's not necessary for this page. And then for our async bundle, we now have uh, 10.8 kilobytes of JavaScript. So if we scroll down, we can kind of see that the components are still rendered the same. They're functionally the same. If we disable JavaScript, um, the JavaScript, uh, the no JavaScript components will still render as we'd expect. And we still have full control over that progressive enhancement story. But really we can set this arbitrary boundary for what we want to be critical versus non-critical at a component level using one element. Um, which I think is super powerful. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this feature. I think that it will unlock some huge productivity gains in terms of how we manage bundles uh, inside of our pages. Um, and it really requires little to no manual effort on your part to um, have streamlined bundles for every single page on your site and even have different arbitrary boundaries for what goes into critical CSS, non-critical CSS, or critical and non-critical JavaScript um, on our pages. I do also want to note that this bucketing and bundling features of WebC are independent of the uh, island implementation that we have, so the island web component for initializing those components. This is also a very powerful feature and will unlock some powerful use cases moving forward because you can load your assets independently uh, of those boundaries that you've set um, for islands. So just in this example specifically, we have a bucket that is async for most of the content on the page as we scroll down. Um, but those islands are actually initialized separately on the client. Um, and you can see that in play. So just as an example, let me reload this. Um, so we have our async bucket and all of that code is loaded asynchronously up front and all of the CSS is uh, available on the page before we scroll to the component. But this component specifically doesn't actually initialize until it's visible. So the assets are actually loaded before the island initializes, um, which is important because we don't want these animations to start um, when the component is out of view. This has an on visible um, condition for it, for is land. Um, but all of the CSS is, lo is loaded prior to that. Um, and you do have full control over that as well. You could make these bundles um, load as a mechanism of an is land component. You could have the is land load the CSS uh, in JavaScript um, in different ways. And moving forward, I'll have more recipes um, showing how to do those different bundling strategies. Um, I think this is uh, having those two things decoupled is really going to allow uh, really fine-grained control over performance of individual components on the page. Um, it really allows you to bundle things together and load them independently. So yeah, try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm really curious to hear how it works for y'all and keep building for the web.